Don't worry about the Knicks. Because it's your boy, Chris, with the Knicks. All right, so I just wanted to talk about the whole two-year-old that got a shot in Chicago. This is very devastating. This child pretty much did not have a chance at survival. For those who have not seen the video, the video starts off with a live video of Facebook. This is about like the fifth, fourth, fifth shooting live stream in Chicago. Probably about like the thousandth shooting in Chicago. Uh, in probably it wasn't two years. Um, this year, because we all know Chirac, which is a derivative of Iraq and Chicago, there are more dead bodies, dead people in Chicago than there is soldiers in Iraq. Now, they should start calling Iraq the safest place on earth because Chicago is becoming more violent than Iraq. They need to start sending the people in Chicago to Iraq. The Iraq, they parried and outdid Iraq. You know, every time you turn around, it's just Chicago, somebody getting shot. You know, so these, um, this woman and this pregnant woman and her nigga, Kool Aid, yes, his nickname is Kool Aid, um, they driving down the street, lip syncing to some death rap. Tell them what they got these guns and they ready to shoot these boys and they. Gonna do all this violent stuff. All of this violent stuff. Towards the middle of the video, the car goes into park and the girl looks to the side and they start shooting. Then this bitch runs faster than Usain Bolt. She runs into the house talking about she had got shot. Then she's just going on and on. Then she starts talking about uh, Kool Aid, he missed shot. They're talking about is he dead? They don't know. Um, not once did I hear they mentioned this child. Not once did she go back to get this child. Because when some, once somebody starts shooting, they only shoot for like a couple of minutes, seconds up to a minute, and then they and then they bounce. You know. Now I'm, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Yes, she need, needed to run to safety. Yes, she had her phone in her hand. Because people were saying, oh, well, she grabbed her phone before she grabbed the child. The phone was already in her hand. Most people probably would have dropped the phone and got the baby. Or would have probably had both. Because the kid was not in the car seat. So, you know, that's that. However, she runs to uh, to the house. <laughs> Fast thing, you saying, Bolt. She, uh, if this was a swimming competition, she probably would have beat Michael Phelps. She, um, okay, then in the video, at the almost at, towards the end, still live streaming. Um, she goes to the hospital. We still don't know nothing about the child. And then finally, we, we hear that the child is deceased. He's a shot at two years old. This is so sad when, you know, we have animals that have outlived this child. A dog has outlived this child. This child did not have a chance. You know, I just, you know, I really wasn't going to talk about the video, but when I found out the kid had passed away, that just made me really sad. Like, I just cannot believe that had happened and to a two-year-old child. A lot of these parents, some people saying that the, the child wasn't hers, so she wasn't obligated to grab him. You know, like I said, that's bullshit, because if you don't get in a relationship with somebody, you take everything that comes with them, including their children. If they have some that was previously before you, you know, I think this is bullshit. You know, this kid was only two years old. A lot of people is having kids nowadays. Just, <clears throat> just a means for them to get on the county and survive. They're not having kids to, uh, out of love. They're not having kids out of... <clears throat> like you would normally have a kid because you want to start a family. You know, you have a significant other. You know, you're ready to create something with that. No, it, that's not happening. It's just people having kids... Just simply because, you know, hey, let me get on the county. You know, I don't want to work. You know, I want to just lay back, chill all day. Um, drink and talk with my friends about something that future or 
Black China or any or these people have done, Lil Wayne, whoever, you know, this is what's, what's happening, especially in the black America. We need to try to start changing all of this. This is what makes Black Lives Matter a joke. It is a laughing joke. Because we keep, Iraq, Chicago, I'm starting to think that this is the place where niggas go to die. This is where black people go to just spend the last of their days. Because, including children, no one is safe. Like I was seeing a, a, a sim, uh, something on uh, MTV, and they was talking about, I guess, AIDS or something. And then Janet Jackson said, none of us are safe until all of us are safe. And Miss Janet Jackson, that's true. Miss Jackson, because yes, that's just true. Now kids ain't even safe. Then you got people out here robbing old people. You know, what? It it's just, I, I don't know what's humanity. Humanity just seems to be lost. You know, I'm, this could have been a setup. A lot of people thinking this might have been a setup. Um, they think that this girl might have knew these guys who um, shot at Kool Aid, maybe out of some money, maybe out of she was just mad at him, whatever. It was something, but she got hit in the process. It probably was a setup because not once did you mention a child, not once did you go run back, you know. A lot of people take pride in their kids. First of all, if you're going to play some death rap and you're going to be semi about that life, you need to be fully about that life. And if you, if you were semi about that life, then you should have had a semi-automatic in that car. I repeat, if you were semi about that life, because I don't think she was about that life. She was a semi about that life. If you were semi about that life, you should have had a semi-automatic in that, in that glove compartment. So that way, when they were shooting back, you could have popped up that car for you know, aim, fire, and protect that child. But no. Like I said, I know this was in the heat of the moment, spur of the moment. Of course, you're going to, when somebody's shooting, you're going to try to, like, get out the way to not get hit. But, you know, you still remember there's a child in there. You still remember your loved ones that are in there. So, you know, this is just sickening to report that a two-year-old child has gotten killed over something that had nothing to absolutely do with him. You know, I'm just very speechless, you know. People, black people wake up. You know, if this type of behavior did not work for you yesterday, it's not going to work today, and it's surely not going to work tomorrow. You keep doing the same thing. You're going to keep doing the same, getting the same results. Stop trying to blame, blame the white man for everything. Because some of the shit just niggas is creating. I'm not saying all black people. Just the niggas. Because there's a difference between black people and niggas. Tupac said, uh, you know, niggers was the one with ch uh, chains, um, ropes around their necks. No, he said, no, he said, niggers is the ones that's hanging from ropes. Niggas is the ones that have ropes hanging from their necks. And then um, somebody else, who, um, Bill Cosby had a whole speech about that, trying to get the black community together. You know, you can go Google that. Uh, but Bill Cosby had talked about niggas. And I don't care nothing about his rape allegations because we all know those, that's BS, let's, let's face it. Just like Tiger Woods was BS. I feel like the media probably tried to manipulate them just because, you know, they're positive black figures, but you know, that's another video for another time. But yes, you know, Chris Rock said, you know, I like black people, but I hate niggas. And it's the truth. You know, this is the grime of the community. You know, we should have learned something from the movie South Central, Don't Be a Menace. No, not the, the funny one, well, that one too, but A Menace to Society. And Boys in the Hood. Those two movies went into the Hall of um, the some prestigious library. I'm just this. I'm just talking off the top of my head because you know. But this is the um, I forgot what library it is, but it entered a very prestigious library because it actually depicted the hood without having people go to the hood, and that's very 
you know, John Singleton, I would like to give him props to that because that's very, very rare that that happens. And, it, and the movie wasn't even cliche. This is just how people, you know, anybody could have been Doughboy, but, you know, Ice Cube pulled that off. As well as um, Morris Chestnut playing the uh, very prestigious black student who almost made it out the hood, but because his brother was in some type of, um, you know, gang, you know, he got caught in a crossfire of that. And the mother was super pissed because his GPA was high and he was going to a um, prestigious school. But unfortunately, um, Ricky, this character got, you know, faded off. And I feel like that's what usually happens. The good ones come into the crossfire as well. You know, we need to really change this. Like I said, this is what makes Black Lives Matter a joke. And people do not get it. Anyways, comments, questions, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Anything you want me to talk about, comment section below. Till then, this has been your boy Chris with the next. You don't need to worry about the next because this is beating your boy Chris with the next. Peace.